Hello, my name is Steve Sawin, and I'm the instructor for your section of Math 217. Um, I want to, in this video, I want to describe to you a couple of things about how the course will go, like on a, the sort of pattern of a typical day and week, and also about how I manage assessment. This is all stuff that is in the syllabus or in that extra document I gave you with it, the sort of technology syllabus, but I thought having a kind of a uh, recorded video of the high points might be an easier way to process all of that because there's a lot there. So let me go through that. So here we are. Um, actually, let me start here. I want to describe the typical day. I want to talk about assessment and I want to talk a little bit about academic honesty. So the place you will start if you are getting ready for class on a typical day would be the class website. You can get there from, I described this in the, in the syllabus, you can get there from our um, Blackboard, but you're gonna go there a lot. So you may just wanna um, remember or bookmark. It's at faculty.fairfield.edu slash ssawin slash 217 one more slash in and it will find it. You don't need the index.html. Um, <clears throat> and this has all sorts of things that will be useful in the course. I'll show many of them to you shortly. Uh, but the main thing now is the schedule. And this is also something you will go to frequently and may want to bookmark. You can see that it is a uh, Google Sheet. I'm going to make it big enough to be easy to read. And the way it's set up, okay, that was maybe a bit much. The way it's set up is it starts the previous class. We don't have one now, but it will typically start at the previous class. So if you missed it or you need to jog your memory, you can see what was covered there. And then it covers each class for the next few days in this view. Um, so let's imagine that it is after the Monday class, but before the Wednesday class, you will click on here and you will see before the big red mark, red line representing Wednesday, January 27th, class two, you will see what you should do to prepare. So sometimes there'll be a thing labeled homework, like here it says, read the syllabus, fill out and sign the honor code form. I will come back to that in a little bit. But typically what you also, sometimes there will be an optional video that you're not required to watch like this that you may find helpful. But most classes, what you will see is a, you will be asked to watch a lecture and to read some section of the book. I would start with the lecture. And if you just click on the link, it will open up um, to the, the lecture. It's a recording on YouTube. Uh, this is a flipped classroom. So reading and lecturing happens out of the classroom offline. Uh, you do it on your own. And then class time is devoted to our interacting, working together to the process of actively learning. So before the lecture, before the class, you watch the lecture. Um, you can watch it right here. If you like, you can you know, wa wa read along with the notes. The point of having a recorded lecture, you can watch it whenever works for you. You can stop whenever you need to, if somebody knocks at the door. Um, you can also stop when you get confused, go back and go over it again. You can stop and think about it for a minute, try the problem first, and then continue it. The more you take control over your processing the lecture, the more value you'll get out of it. When you're done, you wanna know how much, what was I supposed to have gotten out of it and did I? So down here, this table is all the things covered in the lecture, the terminology, the how to do the calculations, what knowledge you need, more advanced calculations, advanced qualitative information. These last two columns are things that I don't expect you to get right away. The first three are things that you could hopefully mostly get just by watching the lecture and playing around a little bit. To see if you got that, you can try the practice quiz. Each lecture has a practice quiz. You can try it. You can go back and check out the practice solutions. Gives you a sense of whether you've gotten 
what you needed from the lecture. If you didn't, you got a lot of options. So first off, there's the book. Most people do not find they get much out of reading the book as a first pass at the material. So you may just want to skim it. But whenever there's something in the lecture that you're confused about, look in that section of the book, look in the index, find the place where the book talks about it. It will give more detail. It is likely to get you unconfused. That's one option. Another option is my office hours. Um, if you, um, there you go. Uh, I have office hours Monday 11 to 12, Wednesday 1 to 2, and Thursday 3 to 5, all in the syllabus. So lots of times you can come to my office hours. My office hours, for the time being, will be on Zoom. So on Zoom means come to the same, to my, it's in the syllabus, my Zoom room. Anybody that's there, I will answer questions. If you need to talk to me privately, we can go to a breakout room to have a private conversation. But mostly, I find it works best to work with whoever comes, ask the questions, have them ask questions, have you ask questions, answer them collectively, um, working together. Another thing that you can do is go to on Blackboard, there is a discussion bulletin board. I am expecting you to regularly read and participate in that discussion board. After the lecture is a good time to go and see if people have asked questions and maybe they've answered questions you had. You can post a question if you have it. You can post an answer if you have some insight into what other people asked, or you can just raise points that you would like to, to um, hear people's thoughts on. Uh, finally, if there's still stuff you're not sure of, you can ask it in class. So that takes us back to um, uh, in class for the beginning of the semester. And I expect for the whole semester, we will be doing remote learning online. I do not feel like Connecticut the country is in a place where it makes sense to crowd lots of us together into rooms and hope for the best. So for the time being, we will be doing purely remote learning. So that means each class will be in my Zoom room. The uh, link is in the syllabus and the tech syllabus. You go there. Um, I would like you. Uh, you your class will start at the normal time. So show up a couple of minutes early, you can chat. I would like you to have your video on. This is very important because the class is going to be entirely interactive. We need to see each other to have any kind of connection. It also helps me during quizzes and tests, of course, um, to make sure everything, people are following the rules, um, but mainly, it is essential to developing the kind of connection that we will need. So I would like you to have your cameras on if you have a problematic environment from which you are Zooming. You can, I can help you set up a background. If you have technology limitations that makes video impossible, talk to me, we will work out some accommodation, but otherwise, please come with your camera on. You can have your mic on or off. There will be lots of interaction. So if your, your mic is off, you need to be fluid turning it on when you need to talk. Um, but if you have it off, as you know, that makes life easier when there are noises. So that's up to you. We will begin each class with questions from last night's lecture. Sometimes nobody has a question. That's over in seconds. Sometimes we spend 20 minutes on last night's lecture. It varies and that's all good. The next step is most days we will have a quiz. Here we go, sorry. Um, so most days we will have a quiz on the previous night's lecture. Here we go. Um, so our first quiz is on Thursday on lectures, the first two lectures, because we're, we will have the, a quiz on the first lecture. Here's how that will work. You will all have a My Pearson account, as I sent you in the email, you saw in the syllabus, 
um, I need you as quickly as possible to set up a My Pearson account and enter my class. Uh, you need to do that by Thursday. In fact, by Wednesday night, because as you can see, there was every once in a while, we'll have an online homework and we have one due Thursday so that you can practice using the online homework system before you take the quiz. Uh, so if you have not done so yet, get yourself a My Pearson account, enter into my class, and then typically in the beginning of class, while I'm asking for questions, people can enter into My Pearson and click on the quiz that we're taking today. It will require a four-digit password. When we're ready to take it, I'll give you the four-digit password. Everybody takes it. Usually I don't have to worry about time. Sometimes I have to stop people at a certain point, but usually there's enough time. You submit the quiz and then we switch to the content of the class. That can take one of two forms. It's always interactive. Everything we're gonna do in class is working together. First version is when we're all working in a group on problems. Maybe we're going over yesterday's quiz or an old test or a worksheet, or maybe we're doing new problems. In that case, as we go through the problem, I will call on people. I have these little index cards here with everybody's picture and name on it. I shuffle them and I randomly select it so that I'm not playing any kind of favorites. When I call on you and say, we multiply two times 10 and what do we get? If you don't know, that's gonna happen. You're gonna get called on a bunch of times. Some of the time you won't know. That is okay. If you don't know, I am gonna ask you another question, maybe a, a question to help lead you into it or a question that's related. What I am looking for is for you at least to engage. If you can't answer any of my questions, you can tell me what you're confused about, what you think it is, but you don't, you're not sure of, or what, um, what's getting in the way, what you missed from the assignment. Anything that you give me to engage with the question is good enough, but I will keep asking gently, kindly. I'm a shy person, so I really get how that can be awkward and unpleasant, but you will need to be part of the interaction in some way. The other thing we will often do is I will break you up into smaller groups in the breakout rooms, usually randomly. Typically when I do that, I will give you a collection of open-ended, more challenging questions. This is where you learn the advanced stuff. This is where you struggle with the ideas and therefore learn them. Um, typically, what will happen is I, I give you these problems, which I call worksheets. I hope that doesn't seem too childish. And one of you will open up the whiteboard in Zoom. You will all be able to write on it or type on it. And you will work together to answer those questions. I will be cycling between the breakout rooms and helping you out with anything you're stuck on and making sure everyone is engaged. Each person is responsible to make sure everyone in the group is engaged and participating. If somebody's not taking part, ask them a question, ask them what they think, bring them in. It is a collective endeavor. <clears throat> At some point, there'll be a little notice saying the breakout room is over, you have a minute, finish up and save that whiteboard. Each person, I will show you how, each person can save the whiteboard as an image to their computer you should do this. I will not, probably not collect them. I will not grade them. The purpose is not to get it right. The purpose is to engage with the material. But when it comes to the test, which will, in addition to the material and the quizzes, will involve the more advanced material you're grappling with in the worksheets, the worksheets will be your primary means of studying for it. And so holding on to those and being able to look at them think about what you did and didn't do is crucial. Okay, so that's what the class looks like. Um, then, uh, what have I missed? Yep, I think I got it all. Of course, a few classes won't work like that. There we will Some of the tests we take will be in class and that will be like the quizzes on my Pearson, probably but take the whole class. We'll probably also have some take-home tests. 
or tests that were in other formats like a paper test. I'm going to play that by ear. But another piece of the course is over the course of this is, a, is the final group projects. Over the course of the semester, you will pick a group of three to five. You will to collectively come up with a research question. You will gather data to answer that question, analyze it using the techniques of the course, and then you will present it in two ways. In the last class, each group turns in one written summary, um, which I'll talk more about, of course. And in the last few classes, each group will take a turn presenting to the whole class, you know, like a slideshow form or something like that, the results of their work. So that's the one time when there will be significant lecturing in this class, but it will be you, not me. This group project, because statistics doesn't make any sense except as a tool in the real world, this group project where you struggle with applying it to the real world, see what is hard and easy and what's confusing and what works, and see how other people struggled with it, what worked for them and what didn't is crucial. It's the capstone of the course. Okay, so that is this strange flipped classroom in this strange online remote setting. Let me now tell you about the strange grading and assessment. I have, um, I have a complicated grading system that is made more complicated by the issues of remote learning. <clears throat> but here's the simple summary. The simple summary is however you manage by the end of the semester to figure out what's going on and to show me that you figured out what's going on, my grading system is intended to capture that. Okay, So lots and lots of assessment, lots of opportunities to show it to me, so no one is that stressful. First off, as we saw, Almost every class, there's a quiz. By the end of the semester, there's gonna be more than 20 quizzes. I'm gonna drop the two lowest. So when you drop, screw one up, drop a ball, something like that, it's not a big deal. Um, I will average the rest and I will write that down as a test grade, one test grade. Second thing is a kind of catch-all, which I call engagement. Um, I told you, I'm gonna be calling on you. I'm gonna be expecting you to engage in the, um, breakout rooms each week. If you seemed engaged in the breakout rooms, if you were present when I had question, when I asked you a question, and if you made a good faith effort to engage with the question, you will get a high, probably 100 engagement grade. Sometimes people will get over 100 if they're exceptionally engaged. So you get a class participation grade each week. Each week, you will get a grade for the your participation in the discussion group. My basic starting point is three posts that are not ridiculous, you know, something real is going to be 100%, but fewer posts where you're really, you know, asking and answering questions, doing something, contributing to the conversation in a real way would also qualify. You can also sometimes get over 100% in the discussion boards. I forgot to mention one thing that I, I would encourage you to do in the discussion boards when you are reading posts, if something is valuable to you, you can give it a rating. I don't see any reason to give a low rating, but you can give it a high rating to say, this was useful to me. That tells other students, this is something that somebody found useful, so take a look at it. It tells the person who posted it, they did something well and that they helped you, which is a lovely thing. And it tells me what you needed help on, what helped you. It helps me understand how you guys are learning and what's working for you guys. And it also shows me that that person made a real contribution and that you are engaging with the material and using the discussion board. Um, okay, so a bunch of class participation grades, a bunch of discussion participation grades. And as I mentioned, there's a few online homeworks. You get to do them over and over again. So I don't expect them to be too challenging, but it's really useful because if you've done online testing, it has a tendency to be unforgiving in a way you need to practice. You know, you need to get used to, if you don't put a comma here, it marks it as wrong or read the part where it says how many decimal places. So few online homeworks just to get used to that. Again, that's, a, that's gonna be some 20 grades. Again, I'm gonna drop the two worst because everybody's gonna drop the ball once or twice and average that, and that's a second test grade. There are gonna be three regular tests. 
some of them in class, some of them all, um, some of them uh, take home. That gets you up to five. The group project also counts as a test, the combination of the written and the presentation. And then finally, the final counts as three tests. That is nine test grades. I will write them down on a piece of paper and the two lowest numbers, your two worst scores, I will erase and average the remaining seven. What that means is, if it takes you half the semester to kind of pull it together, figure out what I'm after, understand how to deal with remote learning, terrible first test, not so good quizzes, but you did well on the tests at the end and the final project in the final, you're gonna be great. If you are really diligent, you do great on the quizzes, great on the engagement, great on the group project, but maybe you panicked on a couple of tests or on the final, you're gonna be fine. If you're a ditz and you blow off all the quizzes, don't do the discussion, not such a great participant in the group project, but you ace all the tests, you're gonna be fine. So any way you can manage to show me what you know by the end of the semester is good enough. I hope that means you don't have to be focused on grades. You don't have to worry about it. You just focus on learning and at some point making sure that I can see that you are learning. <clears throat> I will say, if you start the semester saying, oh, that means I don't have to worry about the quizzes or I don't have to worry about the discussion board because my other grades will count, you, that doesn't work so well in practice. You will be surprised at what things you don't do well at. So. Um, start working on everything. And if, you know, late in the semester, if you want to relax on something, that's your decision. Okay, last thing, I want to talk a little bit about academic honesty. So this is a topic very close to my heart. I have worked my entire career finding ways to encourage academic honesty. One thing I have found, as you will pick up reading my syllabus, is that I have found being really, really clear about my expectations is helpful. And I've written out in the syllabus what my expectations are. Another thing that I have found is bringing you into the process and asking you to engage and think about it. So one of the things that I ask you to do is to fill out, let's go back to the, back here. Um, I have a handout called all my handouts. You are show up in this schedule and you can get by clicking them. So if you click on this handout, you'll see a piece of paper where I ask you some questions about your experience with academic honesty, about any questions you had, whether you understood what I said, what you think about the issues that I brought up and I have a place for you to sign. So I would like you to, over the next few days, print this out, fill it out by hand. I mean, you can type if you're clever enough about PDFs and stuff, but probably fill it out by hand, sign it, that's crucial, and then scan it and send it back to me. One of the things that this does is it helps you practice the final piece of technology. So um, there are a couple I mentioned in the technology syllabus, a couple of standard scanning apps that you can get for your phone or um, pad or, or other device. Um, if you can't do that, if you can find a scanner or just take a picture, but ideally scan um, and then create an account. The link is in the technology syllabus with Gradescope, which allows you to upload that file where I can read it. Typically, we'll do this a few times for homeworks, maybe a test or something where I will be literally grading it in the Gradescope allows that to be more to be more manageable for me. In this case, I am not going to grade your responses. I will read them to get a sense of where everybody is, but I want everyone to have filled this out and signed it. In a couple of weeks, I will go through the list and make sure I've got everybody and anybody I don't, I'll pester and it's kind of embarrassing. So just fill it out. <clears throat> uh, I do want to say that being remote creates huge complications for academic honesty. The way in which we don't meet each other face to face, you don't meet your fellow students face to face, everything is happening in kind of a tiny bubble. 
and you're doing your work sitting in front of a computer with the opportunities to cheat being like incredibly free and easy is a really unfair situation for a person to be in. And I am very empathetic to it, which makes it a particularly important issue. And I wanna ask you to be empathetic to your future self when you are in that position, taking a test, panicking a little, you are going to be sorely tempted to pull out your phone under the table, hoping I won't notice or something like that. Um, you will regret that. I am, based on my experience, I am pretty good at catching that kind of cheating. I will, if I catch it, pursue it. You can see from the syllabus, it's, it's not a nice thing. If you think about really engage with, ask yourself questions about what this means to you, think about what the consequences of you or someone else cheating is, you will have set yourself up for success in that situation. So be kind to your future self and plan your response now because it's, it's hard. It's just a hard situation that we will all be in this semester. That said, I hope that this will fade into the background and we will all be able to comfortably focus this semester on the, um, I hope more pleasantly hard task of learning statistics. It's something I'm really excited about. And I am really excited to meet you all shortly. Uh, thank you and see you soon.